Just as the grandeur of the tree crown depends on the strength of the roots, every community stands on its distinctive personalities. Its success is decided by people who can inspire and show others the way. Let us stop and remember the history of the institution that these people have created, thereby influencing scientific, technical and social life across generations. The foundations of mining sciences date back to the mid-16th century when the enlightened German scholar Georgius Agricola wrote down his knowledge of mining and compaction of ores in the Czech lands while he was working as a physician in Yakimov. He left behind a work that became the most important textbook of ore mining and metallurgical processing for the next 200 years. During the Industrial Revolution, demand for mining and metallurgy experts was growing. Therefore, on the 23rd of January, 1849, Emperor Franz Joseph I signed a decree on the establishment of a mining school in Příbram. Since its inception, teaching and scientific activities had focused on two main fields, mining and metallurgy. Later, the school's science and its education base expanded with other important disciplines. A prominent personality associated with the beginnings of the Pschibrim school was the geologist Johann Grimm. He wasn't the first head of the school, but he was in this position for almost a quarter of a century. He laid the foundations for the teaching of mining and geological sciences and also enabled their further scientific and research development. In parallel with mining fields, metallurgy was taught, with Professor Václav Mrazek being the most distinguished personality. He was also an outstanding translator and playwright at the time, but mainly a metallurgical analyst. He was the first to calculate the blast furnace charge and systematically examine the influence of various elements on the quality of the steel. In 1865, Emperor Franz Joseph I awarded the teaching and research activities of the Apprentice School by promoting it to the Mining Academy of Pschibrum. Professor František Poshepny, the founder of the De Deposit Geology and School Geological Collection, lectured there at the time. The collection has been considerably enlarged since, which you can see in the Geological Pavilion today. With the introduction of machinery into production, there was a growing need for teaching new disciplines. This was mainly mechanical engineering connected with the name of Professor Josef Hrabák, an enthusiastic teacher and scientist. His publications on the performance calculation and construction of steam engines, published in many European countries, were the foundation of an independent field of study, mining mechanical engineering. When the Mining Academy was granted a higher education organization status in 1895, it was equalized with other universities. Adolf Hoffmann, a geologist and paleontologist, became the first rector. A crucial moment was the establishment of a two-year preparatory study involving the teaching of mathematics, descriptive geometry, physics, and chemistry. The transformation of the Mining Academy into a fully-fledged university took place in 1904, when the name changed to the Mining University. The school received a graduation right, and the study was newly extended to four years. The rector was Professor Josef Teurer, who was the first to use the honorary title of His Magnificence. Josef Teurer was an exceptional personality. He was a scientist interested in many other disciplines. He introduced the study of technical physics, magnetism, optics, acoustics, or thermodynamics. With his lectures on electrical energy, he laid the foundations for teaching electrical engineering and thus later the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. 
Josef Teurer, who was appointed director several times, always sought to preserve the unity of the university, especially in the time of German efforts aiming to divide it. After the establishment of independent Czechoslovakia in 1918, he defended the stability of the university, contributed to its successful development in new conditions, and in 1919 he established Czech as a language of instruction. During the First Republic, the school gained a prominent position in the system of technical higher education. It significantly contributed to the development of scientific knowledge, not only in traditional mining fields, but also in the fields of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and natural sciences. After the closure of Czech universities by the Nazis in 1939, education institutions were subject to war needs, educators were pensioned off, or they found employment in research and secondary education. Many students were forced to work in the Reich. This period also took its toll on the lives of several members of the academic staff. An important milestone in the development of the university was the year 1945. Shortly after the liberation of Czechoslovakia, the university was transferred from Příbram to Ostrava by a decree of the President of the Republic, Edward Benesch, to participate in the reconstruction of the post-war industry. In 1951, the university was divided into faculties for the first time in its history. Departments were formed from the existing institutes and they were incorporated into three faculties metallurgical, mining, and mining mechanical engineering. Thus, they continued in the fields that had developed at the university since the mid-19th century. In Ostrava, the undergraduates studied not only traditional disciplines, but also other specializations, from which later new faculties as we know them today were formed. The fields of study of today's Faculty of Civil Engineering were gradually created according to the practical needs. Their beginnings date back to the 1950s when the Department of Mining Construction was established at the Faculty of Mining, with the architect Jaromir Mochka as the first head of the department. He was a recognized author in many urban and regulatory studies, public buildings and ore and coal mine projects. The foundations of economic science date back to the second half of the 1960s and they were connected with the Department of Industrial, later System Engineering, which is associated with the personalities of the teachers Radomil Kittrich and Jindřich Mikeska. It is their work that is behind the development of economic studies and the establishment of the independent Faculty of Economics. Although the Faculty of Safety Engineering is the youngest faculty of the university, students could enroll in the Faculty of Mining and Geology as early as in 1968 to study in the field of fire protection and industrial safety. For example, Professor Yaroslav Maka, who dealt with the issue of mine firefighting and training of rescue crews, contributed significantly to the introduction of this field. Another breakthrough in history was the Velvet Revolution in 1989. The university responded to the downturn in mining, metallurgy and other heavy industry sectors by focusing on new fields using new technologies and new materials. The gradual development into a polytechnic university was completed in 1995 when the historical name was changed to VSB Technical University of Ostrava. The process of linking traditional and still needed fields with the most advanced ones has continued to this day. One hundred and seventy years ago, the Mining Apprentice School in Przybram started in one building and two teachers lecturing on mining and metallurgy provided instruction for 40 students. Today, at VSB Technical University of Ostrava, 12,000 students study in seven faculties and 2,000 teachers and researchers lecture for them.
What is the university today? It is a living organism in which thousands of personalities have imprinted their lives. It educates professionals in both traditional and modern fields. It brings discoveries and innovations. It is an advisor, consultant and expert for the industry, banking and business sectors, offering the possibility of lifelong learning. It popularizes science and technology to school pupils and the public. It receives both Czech and European grants. It is part of our city and region and respects its social responsibility.